May the 4th be with you, everybody. Woo! It's Star Wars Day! Woot! Oh, woo! oh my I gosh. I'm so stoked. It's one of my favorite times of year. Oh my it, god, I love it. It legitimately is my favorite holiday of the year, and it's not even technically a holiday. It's literally like, it's this and Christmas. Like, I just, I love today. <laughs> and boy, uh, did I bring some stuff here i got i got my little my little baby my little baby right, chewbacca right. i'm sitting here mm -hmm. i brought mm -hmm. i brought my comics i brought Ooh. my second set of comics <laughs> i also brought a star destroyer so that way we can play with play with, i don't know where you want me to put that but <laughs> that's there and then i also i also got my lambda class shuttle that's coming down i got just just you wait, just you wait. Do you want TIE Fighters or do you want X-Wings? I've got the T-70s. <laughs> I got the T-70s from the new the new ones, and I got the T-65s from the old ones. I've also got, I got some, I got some Y-Wings. Y-Wings, you like Y-Wings? Oh, we love Y-Wings. TIE love y Fighters, TIE Fighters. You want, you want original trilogy or, or do you want First <laughs> Order? I can do First Order for you as well. We don't want the First Order. No, we don't. We probably don't want the first order, or or an interdictor class star destroyer. Got a little bubble, so it stops people from the the hyperspace stuff. I love <laughs> Star Wars. Um, here's what I got for you. Um, I had all my students today. We pr I printed out. We colored. Uh, well, may the fourth be with oh. you, little baby Yodes, little Grogu. That's um, so This is what I colored. A kid did not. Co I colored this. Oh. Um. I didn't steal any from the kids, thought they should take it home, and I take advantage <laughs> of the time I have, and I uh, I color as well. Um, speaking cool. of those kids, I, I prepped them maybe three or four days ago. Uh, actually, no, I prepped them, yeah, I prepped them on Friday, and I said, um, do you guys know there's a big holiday next week? And they were all like, is it Mother's Day? And I was like, no, <laughs> no, the mothers don't matter in this one. Uh <laughs> Uh, who, and, who, gives, uh, who cares about Mother's Day? <laughs> yeah. Um, one kid said Cinco de Mayo. I said, no, not at all. Um, I said, well, uh, what is the, if you had to think of something that was famous, like a famous line from Star Wars, what would you think that would be? One of the, and my little Star Wars boy, of course, is the one to go, may the force be with you. And I said, what about May the 4th? be with you and all, <laughs> all of them went like this they just went <laughs> the audio listeners i got very wide-eyed they uh they got big wide eyes uh um just in shock they i always told them it's star wars day it's may the 4th may the 4th be with you um so i love today i you know, I, I told Tanner yesterday um, that I always watch A New Hope, but then I started thinking about it, and I think a few years back during a college class on May the 4th, I watched The Force Awakens during class instead of watching A New Hope. So I don't think that's always true, but I always try to watch something Star Wars. I've listened to a ton of the scores today, um, watched a bunch of The Clone Wars. I did watch part of A New Hope today, uh, mainly focused on Bad Batch, though they dropped big Star Wars most of our time. We, we are, I mean, this Ooh. is going to air on Saturday. Part of this airs will air with our Bad Batch clip outs, but um, we were filming on May the 4th, thought we should. So uh, thought maybe they might drop some news too. They didn't. Uh, May the 4th, Star Wars celebration or holidays to me. Um, I always try to watch something Star Wars. So I, I have this kind of off and on tradition too, where I usually try to buy something Star Wars. It's like May the 4th, either I buy something mm. that get here for the day or I buy something that I just, I treat myself. I ended up not, I was real close. Uh, the website Heroes and Villains, which has great stuff, not a sponsor one day, maybe. Um, they have great stuff. They had a big 20% off sale and I almost bought a shirt and some sweatpants, some rebel scum stuff. But I decided not to because I have spent an absurd amount of money the last month. <laughs> so I decided not to. But uh, do you do any little things every May 4th? Do you have like little traditions or things you definitely make sure it's, you do? Well, um, there was a big thing of uh, when I when I used to run the top hobby and tabletop and game, sh uh, game shop back in Montana. Um, we When May the 4th would come around, we'd always get like a big group of, let's say, probably about... 10 people or so and we'd always do some sort of like star wars theme tabletop game and Ooh. then go and watch the movies as well 
and whether that be playing Star Wars X-Wing, Star Wars Armada, um, oh, what was that? Star Wars Legion was another big one. Um, man, it was just, it, it's always something I've done. And before that, it's always the minimum is always just find some piece of Star Wars content, whether that be the movies or some kind of series, sit down and just enjoy myself with a nice yeah. piece of Star Wars. Most of the time that winds up end up being, uh, I'll be honest, winds up being Empire Strikes Back because it's my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, a la mm-hmm. Checks out. Poster. Math, the yeah. math checks out. <laughs> um, one um, of the... No, oh, please, sorry, go for please, it, go for it. No, no I, 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 I really didn't have much much else on, oh, on that. Please, go One ahead. of the things I also, I really love doing is I, <laughs> um... I like to put, I'll put on the trailers for Star Wars movies while I'm driving. So like I did that on the way to work. And I got to say, as much as I absolutely hate The Rise of Skywalker, it might be my favorite trailer they've ever put out. I just, it makes me feel good when Luke has his line about, um, uh, um, now I'm Dude, forgetting it's a, it. It's, it's, it's just a banger a of a line. trailer. It's it a banger really, of a trailer. The combination theme they do with the the main theme as well as uh, the Duel of the Fates theme is just so good in that trailer. I mean, that trailer, there's a reason that movie hyped me up so much. The trailer is phenomenal. From the C-3PO saying, um, you know, thinking he actually might lose his permanent memory. You know, yeah. I'm taking one last look at my friends. That score hits hard. It's just a great trailer. And then Luke saying, you know, it's the destiny of a Jedi uh, to face their fear, something like that. Um, uh, or can I remember? It's confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. Your destiny, and it's a great line actually in the movie. It's one of my few parts of the movie I really love is when Luke shows up, and I love that line in the trailer. And the trailer, it's such a whoever cut that trailer knew if we put this line in, it's really going to be Luke talking to the whoever's watching the trailer, selling right. the movie. And that's how it still feels. And I literally will listen to it when I just need a pick me up because I just love that score when it comes in. I love Luke's line. Um, so I listened to that. I listened to a bunch of the trailers today, um, but I, I, I listened to that one. Um, I just, I really, especially the newer trailers because new trailers are just so different with the old trailers being like in a world far, you know, like, you know, they don't I'll have be the frank. voice, but the I'll new be- trailers rock. I'll be frank, like original trilogy trailers, uh, at least compared to like modern day standards, don't yeah. look good. They don't. No. But that uh, on on the flip side of that, I do think that modern day trailers today do c- can get uh, a little heavy handed in giving a lot yes. of the plot away. Yeah, but no, I absolutely to, agree. Compared to older trailers where it's like they really just kind of give you a quick snippet and then they're out. But yeah. they're just not as it's just modern day trailers do one they get you hype and two they're just man they're just so cool to watch yeah love them love them all right well let's get into the main topics of the show we want to touch on may the 4th may the 4th be with everybody here um excited for revenge of the 5th tomorrow uh but um uh we we're gonna talk about bad batch the new the the first episode of bad batch aired today um, I think this was a strategic move by Disney to, you know, take a break from Marvel because originally it, it sounded like the Marvel was just going to hit all year. Um, and then they are taking a break. Let's Star Wars breathe a little bit. I like that. Bad Batch came out. I got to work early. Uh, that's I just I get to work pretty early. And some days I do a lot. Of, most days I do a lot of my prep work in the morning. I get basically my whole day figured out. But uh, on like days shows drop, I tend to just watch them instead. And I was like, man, I'll just have probably a good 25, 30 minutes to this episode. It, it shouldn't be very long. I click the, the thing on Disney Plus. It said 74 minutes. And I remember being like, oh my gosh. I was like, I am going to sit down <laughs> and enjoy it. And I got maybe 30 in and I was like, I do have quite a bit to do. And I was like, ah, screw it. It's Star Wars. It's Star Wars Day. It's Today is about Star Wars. So um so I watched the whole episode and I got to say, I loved it. I loved it. The more I've thought about it all day, I've loved it even more. But uh, what were your initial thoughts with the that first episode? Same boat, dog. Oh, man. It was great. I, I, I'm in love with it. I'm in love with it. It's, uh, I was, I was um, not quite emotionally uh, prepared, I guess. I mean, like, I wasn't like blubbering or anything like that. Sure. But like, they, they, oh, they real do quick, the big quick, opener. Real quick. Real yeah. quick, this is after, we'll call this an after show. 
spoilers galore. Be prepared. Oh. If you're listening right now, spoilers. We're going to spoil the Bad Batch first episode. You should have already watched it um, by the time this full review comes out. But I just want to point that out. All spoilers. Go ahead. Uh, dude, just just immediately from it. They start with the red Star Wars Clone Wars and then yeah. like a match lighting on it. It, just it was burns awesome. away. Oh, it was like, ooh. it was awesome. And then they start immediately. They they immediately timestamp it of of like oh we see Je- oh oh they're like the fight is still happening. There's Jedi that are that have not been executed by Order sixty six. Oh boy, what's happening? And then and then we got we got a little little Caleb shows up. K Nin or boy. I oh, I was I was ecstatic. I was ecstatic. I love that. him and um I uh. I was like, man, are they going to do a quick little recap? Because I remember in the trailer seeing Tarkin. So my initial thought was this was always going to be post um, closer to episode four than episode three. And right. it really is closer to episode three, at least for now anyway. But I, I was like, are they doing a recap? No, they're dropping the Bad Batch at Order 66. I love the fact that they're defective so that these chips ended up not working. Um and where I just start, because uh, we're doing our Clone Wars rewatch, so we'll get to epi- or season five, but I started season six, and I happened to get those first two episodes are all about the clones and the chips. And so it was really cool watching that this morning early while I was working out, and then getting to work to, to have Bad Batch just touch on all that stuff again. I, it just right. was great timing, and I loved everything that Bad Batch had going, landing there, um, I had forgotten everything with Kanan about his backstory with where they were at and being called Caleb and everything with his name. And I just, I'd kind of forgotten it all at first. And then it, I just like hit me and I was like, oh my gosh, that's Kanan. I was like, holy cow. And I do know that they, this is a bit of a retcon from the comic. The new Canon comics has um, him, uh, his master dying a bit differently. Um, the panels I've seen, honestly, I don't think it's much... I think a retcon's a, a pretty loose term. I don't think I think it's more fleshed out with maybe a few minor things are a little different. Um, but I loved that. I thought it was great. It plays so off of that moment in Rebels 2 where he says, What did you know, what did your master say to you the last time you saw her? And he says, run, and then you get that moment. I thought it was great. The fact that he and yes, does Star Wars connect sometimes a little too much? Sure. The fact that the bad batch were there though, I think is really cool. Yeah. Um I love that they're defective and the things didn't work. I love the whole play on the tumor. Um, The little medical droid I really liked this morning when I was watching Clone Wars. So then when I jumped into Bad Batch and he was there, I was like, thank God. I was like, I want more of this droid. (laughs) Like, can we replace him with Chopper? I do like Chopper, but he's not my favorite. Right, Um, right, right, right. But I, I, uh, yeah, I liked it. Anything, you, anything else about the episode you want to just take off from there? Or do you want me to just keep rambling about it? Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm just here to get all kinds of sweaty about it. Matter of fact, I've actually got the episode pulled up right now as I'm kind of like scrolling. And it was called through. Aftermath. Right? Aftermath. Was that, yes. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh, it was so good. I liked all the Camino stuff. Them going back to Camino, Tarkin showing up. Most of what we got in that trailer is basically everything in this episode. Which right. I really liked because we have, I think it's 12 episodes. And if they're all going to be pretty long, I mean, this was a movie. We got a movie is what we got. And it was, I'm just excited to see where they go from here. And I'm not sure what this plot is really going to be. Is it really going to be them on the run this whole time? I loved that. Um, oh, what's his name? Our sniper boy. Crosshair. Crosshair. I loved that his chip is low key kind of working, but it's not fully working. I loved all that. I loved the play. The second, I liked Omega. I liked yeah. her quite a bit. I The second she popped up and had interest, I immediately went, she's a clone. Oh, yeah. She, she's a clone. She's a clone that they decided to try a female version of um, Boba Fett. And um, I really liked that they picked an Australian actress to voice her. Um, I looked oh, is, up it, is it Australian or is it New Zealand? Uh, or is she a, a South Islander? Oh, I thought she was a, uh, it sounded Australian to me. But then again, I don't know that, I don't know, I don't think I know the accent. Well, well I, I mean, New Zealand, like South Islanders being, um, uh, they're, they're just north of Australia. Um, cause, uh, oh my gosh, why am I forgetting? Uh, Tamora Morrison, he is a South Islander and I need to, I need to look this up. Okay. So Omega, right Bad Batch. Uh, voice actor. 
Here we go. She is from Australia. She is from Australia. Okay. Yeah. Michelle a- uh, Ang, um, who Michelle. was great. Um, oh, very awesome. Very awesome. Yeah. No, I I really liked what she brought to it. And, you know, even the South Island, it was just, it was a different accent than what you get in Star Wars. You get either American or British for most of the time. And I like that we get something a little bit different, a little bit hard hitting. I thought it was it was great. I mean, and, you know, Bill Burr, he brings his Boston accent and people lost it. And it makes no sense. I really liked her character that she joined them. I like that one of the Bad Batch people are out. Loved Echo being there. I mean, it just uh, there's just so much to love about this episode. But oh, anything else you want to take boy. out from here? boy is there uh no i was i was all about that i guess there was no particular I, i'd have to uh i'm going going to have to do a rewatch of it um because uh olivia wasn't able to watch it with me unfortunately so uh boohoo i get to rewatch the episode again <laughs> what a uh, bummer what an absolute with girlfriend bummer. again later <laughs> dude i actually kind of wanted to get sweaty about um there's there's some struggle here that's happening because uh, Admiral Tarkin ends up showing up. So this is before yeah, he yeah. ends up becoming Admiral. a Moff and then Grand Moff. Um, and he's talking with Lama Su saying, yo, uh, we're not really um, liking this clone situation. We're actually going to cancel our contract. And because your contract was, with, it was like the really slimy thing of like, because it was with Republic and we're no longer a Republic anymore. Uh, it's null and void. Or it was um, with a dead Jedi who's dead. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that conversation. This oh, episode it... had politics, and I liked the politics. It's what it's what George aimed to do with, with the first three and mm. missed the mark on. And the Bad Batch, I thought, did a great job. But please continue. I just wanted to uh, throw that out. There. It, dude, it's got me thinking. Like, okay, so I know, I know. Before Bad Batch ever came out, I had like ultimate, like pie in the sky dream vision of mine sure. would be. The Kaminoans actually turning on the Empire with their own small army of clones. Like just reprogramming whatever they've got left to go after. Either that or whoever's they're able to reprogram whoever is on uh, Kamino. Or yeah. maybe because, I mean, they've been genetically modifying this entire army. Who's not to say that they didn't slip their own uh, order? I don't know, 77 that allows that so that uh, they they all start following the orders of the Kaminoans instead of the the Emperor um it'd be interesting that'd be interesting if they went that route i i i would love it i would love it because also not to mention i think it would it would it would lead a little bit more credence and also idea of why why it is that um the clones really stop being a thing in the empire after a point in time yeah uh, i did like that he he did touch on that though a little bit where he said look we can get many more troops faster for cheaper and she was like, right. well, they won't be as good. And he's like, they don't need to, like, that's for me to judge. Like, get out of here. You know what I mean? And right. I, I mean, I, well, I, let's be frank, though. Stormtroopers, absolute, just, like, D-tier, D-tier military force compared to that of our, like, S-tier clone clone force that we got out there oh my gosh it is like yeah. leagues difference between the two and i think anyways. that plays on the movies when people make fun right. of the stormtroopers it's like oh why don't you go watch bad batch episode one season one and hear that conversation you know where they discuss the fact that they would rather take a large qual you know a large quantity of troopers with lower quality right um right. for cheap and I just, I loved it. It made me feel some Game of Thrones vibes, you know, when they were sitting down talking about like the Golden Army and some of those good moments before season eight. And uh, I just, I really liked that. Anything, when Tarkin was on screen, I was in. I was so in. Um, I really loved, um, what is, I'm never going to get the clones names, uh, the Bad Batch, because it's just too new to me. Um, But is it uh, Thrasher or something like that? Or or Big Boy? The Big Guy? Wrecker. Uh, he was awesome his yeah. humor hit <laughs> um in this episode and he is really funny too in in the in the season uh finale of clone wars that um mm. but but man i really liked what they did with the team in this episode i thought it was really good it was such a good first episode it was so oh. so 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 good um do you I see a dramatic change though. in the clones as it, yeah. they, they they do that whole thing as they're walking on by and he's like Something feels off about these clones. Uh, I don't know. Let me let me check it out. It's like get out of the way. 
no, that seems yeah. fine to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, oh, for man. sure. But dude, like in the end, um, I'm trying to remember the doc. I don't kn- uh, remember the doctor's name that um, cloned Omega and has Omega as an assistant. But we see her at the end of the episode as they've come back from their mission after meeting Saw Gerrera, uh, which also love. I, I, I love like, the Saw Gerrera thing. I, I'm happy they went in and like re to like uh, talk them touched touched with that whole thing. I was like, OK, this is pretty cool. This makes sense. But I mean, you know, it's like they they still do have a heart. I mean, they they thought that they were going to eliminate separatists. All of a sudden they realize, oh, my God, there's there's like elderly and children and just people here. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, that was and they, powerful. They, yeah. And they take that moment of pause of like. Mm, this this isn't right this is not right but tarkin tarkin being tarkin uh he's really got all the the cards in his hand as he sends out a little pro droid to uh sleuth out what the heck's happening oh man um there was there was another section oh but anyways last bit so they come back to camino trying to re- rescue omega and then they've got a jet on out of there um and there they uh what was a crosshair calls to one of the other clones like close the close the bay doors and the Kaminoan is sitting there on the pad stopping the door from going and yeah. i'm wildly curious where that story beat's going to go because then she goes to Lama Su and La- and they have that discussion of like well they escaped but Mm, let's not let the empire know about this one because until we assess the situation, I, which would feed into your theory that they might turn some clones to start a little rebellion, maybe rebel scum. All right. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be, that would be kind of um, cool. Does get me thinking though. Um, by the end of this season, what do you think happens to the bad batch? Um, I don't know, and I I'm okay with whatever they they can live and be fine. I think they can go multiple seasons of this and them not encounter anybody really. Um, and I think um, I think if they all died and like Omega is the survivor of this bad batch, I think that's that's okay too. Um, like the play that they do in Rebels, where some of the clones return, like Rex is is awesome. But I just you know they're not in a position really to do that with bad batch um i just hope this story is great whether that ends with their death or it ends with survival or some of the deaths and some survive it just would be it'd be interesting it'd be interesting to see like uh uh is it hunter the main the the leader's name yes hunter i think if he like if he was the only survivor with omega and then he chose to like raise her as like a daughter kind of um i think that would be kind of an interesting way if the rest of the team died and that's what they went with. And then that was season two, but I don't know how many seasons of this they want to do. Um, it looked stunning. I thought that, I mean, going from the fact that we've just been watching clone wars where the animation started and I, and the clone and the clone wars animation has gotten so much better, but the animation in this is just insane. Like those close-ups on Hunter. I was all about, um, yeah. I thought they were excellent, but it, it, it feels you, you really kind of get that sense of, um, of them going immediately from season seven and the animation that they have from that one and rolling all of that straight into yeah. uh, the bad batch TV show. Yeah. Oh, they just, For they, sure. they kill it. Uh, all like all of the fight sequences in this one. I I'm like a really big fan. Actually. Okay. I do have one, one slight criticism. Um, but I mean like, again, this is like clone wars stuff and so on is when, um, they're sitting there. They're sitting there in the training facility area, and all of a sudden, the dark trooper droids start coming up out of the ground. And there is a lot of them at that point in time. And there are like multiple moments of people just being like out in the middle of the open with these droids just jumping yeah. rounds left and right. And you're just like, we've spent like two minutes out in the open. How are you not like just blasted to bits right now? <laughs> I just had that thought once, and it was when he went to get Wrecker. And he was like, you okay? And uh, after he took his first shot and they were just wide out in the open. But I don't have as big of a problem with that um, in the animation as I do in the live action. When the live action does that, it gets a little ridiculous. Right? I agree. I agree. Um, but 
Uh, yeah, is there anything else about this episode, or should we jump into the Clone Wars? Well, I here? think we can jump into the Clone Wars. I'm just, uh, man, just going from the love that you have, that uh, I'd say me and you have for Clone Wars. Um, yeah. This was such a just wonderful love letter, I feel, to the series. And I love seeing this transition from the Republic to the Empire. Beyond, I do too. I, it's it's a fun part of time to be in. I think it where Mandalorian succeeds um, by doing the same thing where Return of the Jedi is. I think mm. this does a good job of putting it right there. Um, the fact that they they first show up and he's like, these are these are like Coruscant guards. Like these are like the shock troopers. Like these are the best of the best. What are they doing here? Um, like all of that, I really yeah. really enjoyed. Um, and I, and I like that Dave Filoni is a big part of it. Um, it's been guys who have worked for Lucasfilm who really did most of the direction uh, that have worked on Rebels and Clone Wars. I was all about. I thought it all looked good. Uh, I really think we'll see Ahsoka. It. I doubt we see Ahsoka. I think they're going to, I think like Saw Guerrero is like the most of a tease we'll get to somebody big. He did say oh. that they do have somebody they're going to, but. Um, Rex is coming in. Yeah, hundred ten percent. Sure, but I don't. I don't put Rex on the same level as Ahsoka. Oh, for like sure. When they come in, but um, I would love to see Ahsoka show up. But dude, they gotta have Vader at some point. I'll be straight. Like if they go out in a blaze of glory fighting Vader, I'm. Oh, that would be kind of cool for Anakin to take ten him out. Ten out of ten. Yes, you got me with Anakin. I'll be fair. You, I'll be frank. You got me with Anakin. Um. Man, I do want weird. to point out, I, as I was mm. pulling up on my TV over here, the the Clone Wars, just so I could see the um, see the thumbnails and the titles, just get a little fresher on all the episodes. Um, mm. I, I was looking when I was looking at all the mer like things I might buy today if I was considering it. I looked at a bunch of different sites and I didn't realize so that they have this brand new logo that plays when you go on to Disney Plus. It's this really cool art design. And then when I went to Amazon to look at some Star Wars stuff, so what Lucasfilm did is they they hired a bunch of different artists from all over the world, um, it seemed like, and people from all different backgrounds. I mean, they were all different races and colors and genders who did different designs for different movies and different parts of it. So like somebody just made designs that you can get limited edition on sale, uh, t-shirts for like Empire, New Hope, Rogue One, all of it together, they have the big thing on Disney Plus. That was one of those creators that designed that, which was kind of the legacy. Um, and I really liked that legacy shot. I didn't like it enough to get a shirt because mm. it was too much sequel on the cover, and I need a break. Uh, but I uh, I really liked the designs, um, and I thought that it was just excellent. So I want to just give them a give them a shout out for the oh heck yeah that watch this show. But anyway, Clone Wars. I got a beginning of the season. What'd you think? Beginning of season uh, five. Season five, yeah. Um, I liked season five quite a bit, my guy. Um, I gotta pull up the episodes here. So when they start with revival, I really like. I really like with the anything with Darth Maul. I'm in. Um, the war on two fronts, I think, is okay. Uh, for for some Saw Gerrera stuff, I don't really like this Ahsoka teen tween kind of love story they've done um i think there's a much better way it, speaking yeah. of a much better way to handle love i don't know if you've gotten there yet in the novel but dark disciple does some stuff that i'm digging the heck out of which we'll talk about when we finish the book but oh my oh gosh. boy i'm having a good time with that um, book. <laughs> so i i thought all the episodes were just okay they get to the gathering the young jedi eh, meh Meh, I'm looking at like Bound of Rescue, okay. Necessary Bond was okay. Secret Weapons, I was oh, not you a had, fan of. You had to have liked it. I, I get the, like, I'm not super crazy about the Youngling arc, but the Gathering. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. What? Like, I liked like, it. Finding, finding the lightsaber and like having, it's it, like kids going through their fears and, and no, the things I, that they struggle I with. I like it. I like it out of all these were named, but like, would I rather watch Daddy One Kenobi goes take out some droids? Yeah. I would, um, but I do like it. And I think you're right. I think the gathering is probably the best of this front loaded kind of meh season. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I do agree with you there. 
Which uh, stings because like revival, I think is a, a a heck of a way to kick off the season. Um, I actually did want to bring up it, something. They they almost hit the mark on the uh uh what is the dang it uh what is the name of that planet that Saul Guerrero is on? It's um oh, not a not a I can't uh remember. Onderon. There we go. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so it's the whole yeah. Onderon arc. Um. They touch on some like very heavy subjects in there, especially at the beginning of like, um, is it okay for us Jedi to be going? Uh, um, they're as they're trying to discussing of like, do we back these rebels? As they really start to get in, the Jedi really kind of take almost a like a, uh, a U.S. military uh, military stance of like intervention of like proxy wars and other things that are happening throughout there. And there's a very interesting subject to, that exists there, but they I agree. don't nail it. They, it, they, they come close, but they just wrap it up way too much in teen drama. When there's a very interesting conversation to be had there. Well, especially um, after they've spent four seasons being the, the soldiers. And then all of a sudden it's like, it, it kind of feels like George and Dave were like, wait a minute, they're not soldiers. So they threw these episodes in to kind of have the Jedi test themselves, um, right. which was good. I agree with you. I think it, it had, it played with it. It, it, it was ambitious. It was ambitious yes. and they ended up not hitting the mark. But granted, um, I mean, like, do, would you agree that like, I, I, I'm in 100% agreeance with you that kids, we can, kids can handle, handle heavier themes and Absolutely. kids are okay with being scared. But when we're discussing insurgencies, rebels, and what is okay and not okay in these very confusing gray areas, do you really think... I don't know if that's fair to be dumping those heavy and uh, very convoluted subjects onto a child that we as... A, that people as adults can't even ha really have a good sure. understanding of or conversation. And that's why they might have not, not like gone sure. whole hard. I think they could have done it. I think like Anakin being the leader of that instead of Ahsoka, I think would have been way more interesting because it would have played better with what goes on with him in his head and his mind. Mm. But um, it's just okay. It misses yeah. the mark. Um, I really though, I mean, yes, I do. The gathering's okay. It has its moments. Um, but I really am not back in until episode 14. I agree. Uh, uh, I do Eminence not. This is a good episode. I had the hardest time completing um, the uh, the droid arc. Although, when Gregor shows up and we finally get him, like we finally get a Republic commando run, running around, uh, I no. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. It was fine. Uh, I uh, just I can't stand droid episodes. I yeah, just they're not good. They're they're just slightly better than Jar Jar episodes. <laughs> Um, but imminence is awesome. And then you get into the shades of reason and you get oh. the, the lawless. And that is where, I mean, with, when you get the death of our girl, Tanner Duchess, Satine, <sighs> it is brutal. The fact that it happens on by mall, the fact that Obi-Wan is there, you get so much more of that story fleshed out. It is hard hitting for my daddy one Kenobi. <laughs> Oh, heartbreaking. heartbreaking. It really is. Him holding her. I mean, you think about what Anakin went through and what Obi... Like, I saw a TikTok that said this the other day. It was like, who can pick up Mjolnir? Like, what other characters from other shows or movies or could pick up Mjolnir? And somebody said Obi-Wan. And they're like, Obi-Wan lost the love of his life after, after understanding that his job as a Jedi was bigger than that love. That mm. he lost her, had to kill thought he had killed his apprentice who had turned on him, find out that didn't happen, dies, trains Luke, does get, puts Ezra the right direction, he could pick up Mjolnir, and hell, yes, I agree. What um, age do you think that he picks it up, though? By the time he's Guinness. He's got to be Alec Guinness. I completely agree. Thank he you. He needs to uh, be uh, the, at least the level of where he is out in Rebels, where he takes out Maul. Where, Man, yes, I, I was going to say, if... Episode. If 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 uh, if Maul shows up and they have their good little tete a tete, and all of a sudden Mjolnir shows up and it's whipping into his hand, I'm like, I believe it. I, that yeah. 
you gotta have the moment of reflection like he takes so long to just be with himself in the desert to reflect on everything yeah. train learn meditate mm -hmm. um you know i'll say this real quick too uh obi-wan and maul's arc is so good it's it, to me it's on the level of some of the best like the best um like back and forth characters get like i honestly i put it up there with like um with like brian uh like um um uh, why can't i think of it um brian cranston or as breaking bad as walter like walter white and jesse pinkman like yeah. they're back and forth of you know uh, their journey the the journey the two of them take i put it up there probably you know with um with Sam and Frodo as well, like their journey or um, some of the best anime characters you think of, like I think of like Naruto and Sasuke and the journey they yeah. go on where they are friends. Some of those are friends, some are not, but I just, just, I, I put those two up there and I, I would put Anakin and Obi-Wan up there as well, but Maul and him just, it's just, it's the tick he can't get rid of. Obi-Wan just can't. He killed his master. He killed the love of his life. He is responsible for killing clones that he cared about. He's responsible for killing a lot of people. Um, and then it's just so good. And those episodes where they team up in imminence, you get kind of the big, big, big hit uh, in Shades of Treason or Reason, excuse me. And then when you get to the, the Lawless, it's just, it breaks your heart. It breaks yeah. your heart. And then, and this is what this season did. And I, I don't, I won't, when we, this is not my favorite season. I know you're going to ask me. It wouldn't yeah. be my favorite season. And it's because they struggle with half of it. But they or they backload everything. Because the fact that you go right from the Lawless to the Ahsoka arc, where she gets put up for treason um, and becomes on the run, to then her getting um, pardoned and them welcoming her back and her saying no... I don't think the Jedi is what this is about. It's, it is a lot. It is a lot yeah. for me as such a daddy one Kenobi fan to go from that and to think I have a moment of peace. And I remember as a kid watching these episodes and thinking to myself, like I didn't love Ahsoka and then all this stuff. It was like, all right, they're finally doing something interesting with Ahsoka. And then it's like, oh my gosh, did Ahsoka just become one of my favorite characters? Like, I just love it, but <laughs> I've talked too much. What do you no, think? I, I mean, uh, um, Oh gosh, there's a movie that's based off of um, Ahsoka's uh, end arc on this series, and I'm trying to remember the name of the movie, and I can't. A Star remember. Wars movie? No, 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 not a Star Wars movie. Just like like a very classic um, film movie of of someone being framed in the way that Ahsoka's being framed. Oh, and for murder. For murder and so on, um, and she, like obviously all the evidence points to her, and that that character needs to go and try to prove themselves prove themselves innocent. Um, I can't remember the name of the uh, of the movie, but I will uh, I'll get back to you on that one. Um, okay. Love, uh, <laughs> uh, there we are seeing the Imper the uh, Coruscant Guard Imperial Shock Troopers. Anytime those dudes show up on scene, you're like, oh no. Yeah. Bad stuff's about to happen, man. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, it's, it's a wonderfully conflicting arc. And between the uh, from the beginning of Sabotage to the end of The Wrong Jedi, there's a few moments in here. Like, most of it, 10 out of 10, I'm absolutely a fan of. Other moments, I'm, I'm like, man, I wish we could, like, pick it up a little bit more. Um, sure. Or maybe, uh, but, like, oh, gosh, I just... There are some critical character moments, not only with Ahsoka, but with Anakin throughout this whole arc. Uh, and there are like two or three other moments in um, in the Clone Wars. I really, really feel that really that like push Anakin away from the Jedi. Those those are the critical key moments that you could pull away from Clone Wars that would show you. Uh, the person that he ends up becoming, um, yeah. and like one of the one of the big moments of like uh, they finally capture Ahsoka, all of a sudden they like put her out on trial, and he's like, "This is just a formality. You've already made the decision." And yeah, oh, it it's such a and also um, with her being the only or with him being the only person 
that a- or that actually trusts Ahsoka and doesn't think that uh, that what she has going on. And then and then freaking Mace Windu has the audacity to come in and be like, "We now realize that this was your great trial." And I'm like, "You son of a gun! I can't believe you're coming in." With all this, just like, oh, but, you know, we were thinking about, like, turning you over to the Senate to get to killed, but uh, now we realize that this was really your trial. Ha <laughs> come on back. Yeah. No, no. You know, Ahsoka, too, with the way that they handle her character, um, like, by the time you get to, like, when you get to these first few episodes, she feels like she's, like, 16. I think when she's mm-hmm. doing the tween thing, she's like 15, 16. Most of the show, honestly, up until here, she I think she comes across a lot more as like 13 or 14, just with her mental age, how they handle her. Um, and then by the time she gets here, she feels like she's like a 19-year-old adult who is for the first time questioning everything that has been brought to her after something happened and she went through a big tragedy. And that's what I think right. I just love so much about her. I mean, I really love that. Like, like to catch a Jedi, that fight she has, I really love. The conversation with Anakin. The whole time I'm sitting there just thinking of Rebels. And I'm thinking yeah. of when she rips the face, his face mask, and the pyramids closing. And I just sit there and I'm just like, man, she has such a good arc. And then, oh. you know, you get her finally back in Mandalorian in live action. And it's just... I, I really liked the, I mean, they really do backload these episodes. Um, and I do agree. There is a few moments here and there where it's like, we could speed this up. We could not drag some of these kind of cornier moments out, but when they hit, they hit. They really do. Holy cow. And I mean, like, I don't know. For a while there, I I always kind of, I, I like, I liked the decision of what they decided to do with the Sokotano, but sometimes... And I mean, the more that I've watched these last few episodes, I don't feel that this is the case. But I initially kind of thought I was like happy with the decision, but it feels like a little bit of a, a like a hard 180 turn for the character of Ahsoka to then all of a sudden just be like, I I'm not coming back um, because it it, it uh, like ini- again initially not what I think anymore. Um, I, because in the beginning of it, I thought it's like, this is an order that you fully like devoted yourself for. But then as you continually watch it through and through, it's like, not only with the, the conversation she has with the Saj, Asajj Ventress, but also, I mean, the entire order is effectively turned against her. And I mean, also betrayed by effectively one of her best friends in the Jedi order. That's totally going to be something where you're like, no, I can't. I need to come back because all of you had written me off. It's except human for you, Anakin. Yeah. It's human. It's, it's her saying, and it's something I think we all go through when we're that age, when we're 18, 19 years old and you sit back and you go, holy cow, I've just been through a big moment in my life, a huge moment a, a, a climactic chapter changing moment. And where do I want to go from here? And I like that her, her Jedi instincts are let's step back let's have patience and let's just go find your own way. Let's not rush back into this. Let's see what happens. And then when you get to season seven, when we get to the finale, she kind of, they kind of poke fun of her maybe coming back and thinking about it. And Anakin and her have that dialogue. um, And then the, the, the fall happens and she realizes that all along, this was not good. And her master turns and then you really see the pain that she has. And we'll get way more into that in season seven, but also, also, Um, <clears throat> her decision. Uh, the other big thing is her decision of going off to figure out her own thing. Something she needs to do is also one of the key events that ends up pushing Anakin over the edge yeah. as well. It help. I mean, it's huge. It helps him go to the dark side a lot. Um, yeah. and then ugh, it's just so good with Ahsoka. Then later and her, her just thoughts. But I'm curious. So, what would you put as your favorite arc in this season? Oh, I, the, um, I really like the Ahsoka art. Mm. I actually think I go with my daddy one, Kenobi. I, I love was the Mandalore War. Just it's about like to 1A, say. It's like 1A, 1B. The, me. uh, the, the Underworld Mandalore arc is, it's firing on, it feels like it's firing on all cylinders at the entire time. Um, yeah. and I absolutely love that. Um, uh, also, not to mention, we see Palpatine come in, and he's like, "No, I will put you in your place." <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
but ugh, the prop the ending just hits so hard for the Ahsoka arc, but the other one is firing on all cylinders at all time. And, uh, well, oh gosh, with the, with the death of Duchess Satine, you're like, oh, it hurts so much, but I think I'm going to have to give it to the Mandalore, the Mandalore arc. Just barely. Smart. Just I think barely. it's one A, one B. I think they're right there. I mean, it's, it's tough and they do backload this season so hard. hard. Like I just hard. I scroll up and it's like, why did I watch these episodes? Like I would have skipped all of them just to get to that last arc. And none of these play a huge role in the story. I, I tell well, the, okay. the, the, the one little, uh, for me, it goes, um, rewatching this. I would do revival. Um, I would do the gathering, um, and then jump back in at episode 14 with eminence. Sure. Um, like if the gathering was the first episode, like if they, if they cut everything out before, I think I'd be happier. <laughs> I do like it's that just... they are playing with some themes. I do like revival, so I take that back. But uh, I do like the themes in two and three. But it's just it's not amazing. The gathering is such a I guess is such a big thing. Uh, I don't know. In my head, it's always been such a big thing of like the Jedi creating their first lightsaber. It and is the cute. test that they need to go through in order to do that. Each one of these, it's it is a kitty episode, but they really do wrap it up in a very nice way. Of I mean, each All one of right. these kids You're has convincing me. <laughs> each one of these kids has their own personal struggles, like we all do when we're younger. We always have that like one little thing that we're always kind of struggling with with and each one of them. Everything's the end of the world, right? Um, fear, selfishness um uh reliance on technology or or so on with all these different characters and each one of them learns to over to use those things sure but to overcome them as well um and to fight their own their own fears and their own demons and i really they make them not attachments uh, yes and it also and also not an attachment the big thing the big thing is it, they need to get that in order to get their kyba crystals to become a jedi love that Love you it. actually have taken me from like okay to very enjoy. Uh and and dude, it's 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 like going through and getting your wand at, in Harry Potter. This is this is going These into, kids are even younger though than technically Harry is. Right. Yeah. Uh what's um oh I forget the name of the shop in Harry Potter oh, where they not. go and pick up uh where they go and pick up all the wands and whatnot but it's it's the Star Wars version of that and that is why I love it so much we we've seen Ilum used in a lot of like comics or uh, extended universe for like where the Jedi go to get all their kyber crystals but when we really get that moment to really see what it's like man yeah they're for it all right you've convinced me you won <laughs> you won the day um is there anything else in this season we want to touch on or should we wrap up uh not really um a real uh real rough opener followed by a really kick butt half uh back half i am kind of curious though i with um season sevens i i'm i'm getting the sense at least for me wind up my will probably wind up being my favorite season but i don't know man mine too well, it's just, I think those last four episodes slap so hard that you're just like, you can't. Even even with some of the, like, mediocrity of some of the other sections of uh, season seven, it just, it's so good. It's so good. I will say, though, I think all the stuff um, with the clones on uh, Umbara might might still be my favorite arc so far. Wait, just was up to the, are you saying up to this point or are you saying like across in, the whole Clone Wars? So far through okay, everything so we've far. watched. So no, it, it might in season four. I just, I really liked that episode. Um, yeah, it's four, probably four, that or, or Mandalore. Four but. episode arc that's absolutely incredible. But yeah. dude, the, the Siege of Mandalore, I don't know that. <clears throat> I'd have to think on it. But I was just scrolling through and immediately just got excited about how much I loved that arc with the clones. So, I oh. mean, those are the top three so far for me. Would right. be basically the back half of season five and then the the middle of season four. So, Man, no. Epis- 
those last those last four episodes they do oh, they're so good <laughs> it's true anyways all right well i think that's all we got for today one last thing that I meant to put out here. Um, you were discussing with me at one point in time of uh, no. a real a real lightsaber being a thing. And I was like, Pisha, that doesn't exist. It's not real. But I saw an article that said Disney has created a real lightsaber. Disney unveils footage of its real lightsaber. And uh, did they just now do that? Or did, they did that, that today. Here, oh. I will link you. I'm going to link you the article right now. Please do. Is there a now. video? There is a video. Uh, I have yet to receive this link. Working on it, working on it. Paste, boom, there you go. Oh, this is the sizzle reel. I thought this was for a video game. No, no, that's a I'm going to watch up... this right now and just give my live reaction to it. That is that is a straight up real, uh, well, I mean, real lightsaber. <laughs> I can't hear you at all, Tanner. I've lost you. It, you still. Hello. My fault. Uh oh. Uh-oh. I'm still getting you. I'm still getting you recording. Shoot. No, you're good. You're good. We're okay. good. We're good. We're good. Okay. Sweet. 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 We're good. Go ahead. And, I, just uh... wa- I just watched it. Yeah. What did you? That's think? real. I thought that was a video game at first, and I was like, "Wow, I did that's too. cool." Now I need to, okay, so here, um, in what is technically a teaser for Star Wars Galactic... Take your arm off, but it would be like a crazy little, like, flashlight, which sounds incredible to me. Well, it's, a, so I think it is like a, an Ellie, oh, here we go. Um, do, 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 let's see, uh, saber that's essentially a plastic tube on top of a flashlight. <laughs> uh, or it can be fully retracted or unsheathed with a cool, a cool flick of the wrist. Um, brand new lightsaber that combines both more screen accurate LED lighting and fully retractable was first spotted at Disney Parks uh, presentation in April 2021. That's when I linked you the article. I think that looks awesome. I would buy that. How much do you think that's going to cost though? Five, six hundred. I mean, you get replicas for three, four hundred. So I guess they'd have to go a little higher. Oh, that's brilliant. What? Uh, here, let me show you effectively what they've done. There is another link that someone did. Do, do, do. Is this that tweet? Yes. The, it, the, there's a, uh, that article at the bottom, it shows you the, the animation of the concept behind the tech of, if, if you scroll down from the video on the Polygon article, you can see, uh, the yep, tech I'm behind it. right now. Oh man, that's cool. I didn't even that's kind of that's that's an ingenious that design. Cool. I didn't even think about that. And then the lights just flash that. back and forth. That yeah, so it's cool. effectively a string of LEDs that just gets continually pulled up with tension still on it and then it just retracts the whole thing. Man, that's that's really smart. Why am I not that smart? <laughs> no, whatever. Like let, let 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 that's some other cool. nerd let some other nerd go out and figure it out. But anyways, it's May the 4th. We got like the coolest lightsaber that's come out. Yeah. I'm stoked. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I think this is it for another happy landing guys. Go to all the stuff on movie meals. Thanks to the patrons, which I forgot to do because I was so excited about May the 4th at the beginning. Um, go get some movie meals, merch, happy May the 4th to everybody. I know it's past. We're past May the 4th. We're past revenge of the fifth. We're past return of the sixth. Um, the Force of Sevenths. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> Rise of the Sevenths. Um, the Phantom Seven. <gasps> that might Attack of the Sevens. Now nah, you lose it by that point. Yeah. You get your first three. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Happy May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Um, love talking Star Wars. Um, yeah, and for another happy landing, I guess we're out of here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.